All right, great. This week, tying in with last week when we were talking about the principle of least action and its connection to conservation laws, we've got a big uh, secret of cosmology to expose for everyone. The question for this, this week is, is energy conserved in the universe? It's an excellent question, of course. Now, th let's just remind ourselves mm -hmm. what we mean when we say conservation of energy. Now, this is something that kids learn in their, their, fit, um, their science classes very early on, that there's this stuff in the universe, mm -hmm. energy. And everybody sort of knows what they're talking about, but it's not one thing, right? I mean, when we talk about energy, it's different kinds of things in different kinds of scenarios. Right. So we can talk about uh, heat energy, right? Thermal energy, which is in the random motions of particles jiggling around. Mm -hmm. But there are more abstract energies, like potential energy, which is related to for gravity, where something is in a gravitational field. Right. If I have an object up high, it has uh, gravitational potential energy, which can be released as the ob object falls. And of course, what we, we learned about with regards to our examination of the Lagrangian last week was that if we have symmetries, mm -hmm. then these imply conservation laws. Mm -hmm. And if we have a symmetry in time, then mm -hmm. we can talk about a conservation law associated with energy, which basically means that if we add up all of the energies we have in a particular circumstance, we get a number. Mm -hmm. Things can happen, and as long as energy doesn't flow in or out, mm -hmm. then the total amount of energy in that circumstance is conserved. Right. This seems like a really obvious thing for us now, but actually, you know, conservation of energy had to fight its way, especially through about 100 years ago when uh, radioactivity was, was one of the major things that they thought might overthrow this. There were these objects that seemed to just emit energy out of nowhere. But when we looked harder, when we looked for more forms of energy that there might be, we discovered a new form, nuclear energy. Nuclear energy. E equals mc squared, and there was the energy for radioactivity. Absolutely. So, so still, conservation of energy plays a very key role in essentially all of the physics that we examine, right? So, you know, if any kind of experiment we do in a laboratory or anything mm -hmm. we do with regards to the uh, the Earth and the planets and, and stars moving around in our galaxy, energy is conserved. We can talk about conservation of energy. Mm -hmm. So it's a very powerful thing. And sometimes I said it's presented as a little bit of a, this is just the way the universe works, but it's related to the symmetries in the Lagrangian. So if we're looking at a particular system and we want to know, does this thing uh, conserve energy? Of course, we'll do all the experiments. But on a theoretical side, what we're looking for is the basic laws that describe this system do they have this property of being time symmetric? Yes. Does the same law uh, apply, uh, you know, as, as the same Lagrangian apply as I move forward and backwards in time? Yeah. So now we come to the universe as a whole. Does it have this symmetry? This is where things get really interesting. So um, we can talk about the expanding universe mm -hmm. in the language of Lagrangians. We can talk about the way the space-time structure of the universe is set up, mm -hmm. and we can talk about it as a Lagrangian, and we can look for symmetries in the Lagrangian mm -hmm. to see if there are quantities we can associate with, with energy and momentum, etc. So we, you can get out conservation laws, and sometimes they're not quite as clean mm -hmm. as what we see in classical physics, but they're there. You look for a symmetry. I use my physics here the same as my physics to there. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing with the universe is that we can now ask the question... Mm -hmm. Is our physics today the same as our physics tomorrow? And, and for our general relativity, which describes the space-time of the universe, what that means is, is the space-time structure today the same as the space-time structure tomorrow? And the answer is no, mm. because the universe is expanding, mm -hmm. and so the, the, the details of the space-time change from day to day, which means that the... The symmetry that we're looking for in the time direction, the thing that gives us conservation of energy, is not there. So we actually have a statement that in the expanding universe, energy is not conserved. But we have to be very specific. We can't just say anything about energy. Right. So um, when we're talking about general relativity, of course, all of these symmetries of space and time are kind of up for grabs. Because in Einstein's picture, space can do all sorts of crazy things. It can warp and ripple and all those sorts of things. So whether a particular space-time has these symmetries is not any is nothing to be taken for granted, right? It, and in in fact, because the universe is expanding, because it's changing with time, that symmetry is just not there. Mm -hmm. The space symmetry is actually so there is the equivalent of conservation of momentum. 
Yes, but again, it's slightly more complicated. Yeah. It's always more complicated. And I think, we, I mean, we could fill this whiteboard with, with maths and talk through it. But um, there are symmetries that we can take advantage of and talk about conservation mm -hmm. laws. But I think the one which is kind of interesting, of course, for today's chat is conservation of energy. Right. So let's, the most famous example of this is, and you get asked this whenever you teach cosmology, like if, if someone's really on the ball, they ask, okay, so redshift. The light as it comes across the universe is being stretched, which means that each photon of light is, is losing energy. Where does the energy go? And it's a good question, of course. I mean, where does the energy go? If you, I mean, if you have been educated to believe that energy is conserved, mm -hmm. then if, if I fire a, a photon across the universe, I m might emit a high energy blue photon. You might receive it as a lower energy uh, red photon, mm -hmm. where did the energy go? And of course, for a long time, people actually l tried to imagine physical mechanisms whereby light would lose energy. And these are these tired light models mm. that light loses energy as it travels across the universe. But they it wanted to invoke a mechanism where energy is actually extracted. What we've got in our general relativistic picture, of course, is that um, the you just don't have energy conserved in the due to this lack of symmetry mm -hmm. in the time direction so the energy is just not there anymore okay right. it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't get sucked out of the photon by a particular physical process right. it just is not conserved energy is just disappears from the universe right so it doesn't turn up in a different form somewhere all the all the energy that was in photons a billion years ago in the universe isn't still here but in another form it's just gone it's it's gone it's gone as the universe has expanded the uh energy has not been conserved so photons have lost energy as they travel across the universe but but it's not just photons mm -hmm. massive objects undergo the same thing as well so if you imagine that we have our early universe if you imagine you had things whizzing around at high speed mm -hmm. as the universe expands the energy that they have in what we would call kinetic energy yeah that also disappears, and so particles relative to each other slow down and come to a stop. If we were trying to do this not within Einstein's picture, but within Newton's picture, we'd be trying to define something called the gravitational potential energy. So if you just work within Newton's picture and say the Earth expands a bit, right, there would be, le you know, that you would you would have more energy within the gravitational potential because you could get out of it, mm -hmm. get energy out by making it contract. Why can't we do that in general relativity? Because general relativity just refuses to play ball, yeah. right? So one one of the one of the ways that we can define gravitational potential energy is through the fact that in Newtonian physics, gravity is a force, mm -hmm. and so you can talk about the amount of work done as particles move, are moved from one place to another. By the gravitational force mm -hmm. okay so everyone remembers force times distance and that's the work done and so you can you could construct all of that energy conservation by talking about um when i throw a ball up in the air it seems to slow down so it starts off with lots of kinetic energy mm -hmm. that kinetic energy drops away but that gets turned into potential energy mm -hmm. which is returned when the ball falls back down again mm -hmm. so we can talk about an exchange of those energies in general relativity Gravity stops being a force. Mm. Okay, so this is what what makes things complicated is that that the entire apparatus where we talk about work done by gravity becomes a lot messier because gravity is no longer a force. And people have tried. People have tried. Yeah. Who can, uh, even Einstein tried different ways you could sort of construe the mathematics such you could invent something like the potential gravitational potential in an expanded universe. Mm -hmm. But they all fail. They all basically, um, they, they run afoul of this. Uh, one of the key things of relativity is that, um, you know, there are some absolute quantities, which everybody agrees on. Everything else is relative. Mm -hmm. And the potential field ends up being some quirky mess in between mm -hmm. things which are supposed to be invariant that everyone agrees on and things that everyone has different viewpoints on. Mm -hmm. So there is no single mathematical framework to describe a potential energy where this energy of the expanding universe could be stored. And in fact, anytime you try and mess around with the equations to add that kind of energy term, I've so far been doomed to failure. Right. But that doesn't mean that physics is doomed to failure. The, the energy still changes. We can still do things like thermodynamics. We can still talk about how the universe works and how 
uh, thermodynamic properties, thermodynamic reactions, like nuclear reactions happen in the universe. This doesn't completely ruin physics for us, does it? No, no. So, so um, while energy is not conserved, it doesn't mean that all bets are off, right? I mean, we, we still know how the, the energy terms in the universe change as mm. the universe expands. So if we have, well, as we know, we have, the universe is filled with radiation, the cosmic microwave background radiation left over from the initial Big Bang, mm -hmm. and we know how that has cooled down and how the energy in that has disappeared over time. Mm -hmm. And this is also very important for the earliest stages of the universe because mm -hmm. we're very interested in the physics that went on when the universe was very hot and very dense, when we had nuclear synthesis, when the first elements formed, mm -hmm. and that's all to do with particles crashing together and interacting with the radiation that's there. Mm -hmm. And we know that as the universe expands, the universe cools, energy disappears, but we still know how much energy is there, how things interact. And so we can make predictions for how we see elements in the universe today based upon the fact that we still know how physics behaves, even though energy isn't ultimately conserved. Right, so cosmology still works, but it's we've got this shocking secret behind the scenes. It, it, it always leads to people going, what? When you yeah, say that yeah. energy is not conserved in the universe, but... That's the way the universe, appe is. The universe appears to behave.